Harry Corbett, I mean, you, you are basically unique in the history, I think, of British show business, certainly in, in, this, in this century. Here you are, a man and a glove puppet. When you actually curl up in bed at night and think about what you've achieved, doesn't it seem to be absolutely amazing that you owe it all to mm -hmm. that bit of fluff there? It does indeed, uh, Richard, yes, it is rather unique, isn't it? Because in all these years, it's 23 years now we've been on television, and in all these years we've never had any serious competition. There's been nothing else of the same format on television, which is rather new, but unique, isn't it? A, a, a fellow or a woman with a, with a glove puppet and a little bit of slapstick and a relationship between them. I must say, it's nice to be the only fellow in the, the whole of millions in a country that does one job and nobody else does it. It is remarkable. Well, all right, you do, what, you do one job and you've been doing City, what, for, for over 23, 24 years. Don't you get absolutely sick to death of it? Sick to, sick to death of what, Sooty? Mm. I, mean, I know you probably. Job. I know you probably laugh all the way to the bank, but nevertheless. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> no, no, you never get sick of it because it's the world's most satisfying job. It really is. I mean, first of all, will you take a little rest for a minute? Go on, just go down there and have a little sleep. It's very difficult. It's, it's like you've got. <laughs> yeah. What's the matter? Can you have a word with Richard? Later, later. Not now. Not now. Oh dear, you've got that schizophrenia on this job. What would we, we, we say? No, no, I forgot. What? I'm a friend to you. <laughs> yes. I mean, you've, you've had your hand up that for... for uh, what? <laughs> oh, look, he's had it already. I mean, shall I, can I just tell you one little thing? There's a little boy, we did a show in Blackpool, and after the show, this little boy came up. He was about seven years old, and he said, I've enjoyed the show very much, mister, but I know what you do. I said, what do I do? He said, you put your hand up Sooty's bottom. <laughs> I don't know, come back, it's true, is it? So I couldn't say anything. Well, it is actually true, isn't it, that you bought Sooty initially for seven and six. Uh, that's Blackpool. true. Yeah. Tell, us, tell us the story of that. <laughs> uh, no, 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 you, you, you wait down there. Look, I can't talk and, and look after you at the same time. Well, I bought the first teddy bear. He wasn't Sooty then, he hadn't got a name. He hadn't got black ears, he was just an ordinary teddy bear. And I saw this little thing in a shop on the North Pier in Blackpool. I bought it for seven and sixpence. And I used to do a bit of magic at that time. As a matter of fact, I was having magic lessons with a fellow in Leeds called George Blake. And he sold me a similar teddy bear, sewn in a felt hat with a hole in the back. You put your hand in into this puppet. So with the two puppets and this hat, I got busy and worked out an act. And I used to do this around children's parties, Masonics and things like that, you know, around about home. I was an ele electrical engineer by profession. And everybody immediately fell in love with this teddy bear. They said how real it was. I don't ask me why, what the chemistry was, but they fell in love with this teddy bear. They didn't mention the magic or anything like that. It was always the teddy. So I thought, well, this is worth concentrating on and specializing in. So I worked up an act with just the teddy bear doing it. And this was an amateur for three or four years. And then we got a, a, an opportunity on television through Barney Colehan who is a, an old friend of mine, you know, and through Barney I got this amateur night in May 1952. Yeah, I mean, it is amazing, the rest, of the rest really is legendary, really, what you've yeah. achieved and how yeah. people, everyone has heard of you. Yeah. But it is, it is amazing with the effect you do have on children still, uh, how you do uh, bring the magic into <laughs> their lives. And uh, we have just can see this tremendous appeal you've got for children uh, when we show this bit of film, which is uh, of you with some kids we took this morning uh, in a little nursery in Leeds. Here it yeah. is. Who do you like best, with your sweet or Sue? I like Sue, Ben. You like Sue, do you? I like all of them, I like all of them, You like all of them, do you? Yes. <laughs> I like all of them. I like all of them. all of them, do you? I'm <laughs> actually, now, don't, don't fight. Look, they're fighting. Look, Daddy. Oh, well, he's doing his bow now. Sure. Yes, yes sweet. Can he talk to Richard now? No, not now. I'll tell you when he can talk to Richard. Oh, he keeps wanting to I talk to I mean, the children Richard. do love it, don't they? I mean, but why, why does it work? You said other people have tried glove puppets, and there have been millions of different puppets on television and everywhere in the theatre. But why has Sooty worked? <laughs> An, inanimate, an inanimate puppet like that hasn't even got a face that moves, you see, as a lot of other puppets have. <laughs> yes, but you can imagine expressions um, by the inflection of the hand. I mean, he can, he can be very jolly and gay, but he, he can be rather sad. And, you imagine people say to me, I can see his expression changing. Although he doesn't at all, but as a matter of fact, he's got no mouth. Uh, Sooty, I don't know whether you've known. No, don't cover it up, it's all right. <laughs> 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 no, let, let them see, let them see, come on. 
You see, he's got no valve there, so therefore it doesn't turn up and it doesn't turn down. But he can be either very happy, you know, very happy, or, or, or when he does that, you can almost imagine his mouth going down, you well, know. When he's plotting something, when he's, when he's scheming something against you, how does he look then? <laughs> <laughs> yes, and he's usually plotting something. You know, when we're doing a show, I can look at those sparkling little eyes and I can wonder, I actually wonder what he's thinking about, don't I? <laughs> and sometimes he does things without me even knowing. You know, if we're in a theatre doing a show in the theatre, and one of the kiddies goes out to the toilet, he will see the child go before I do. It's, it's having a, a split mind, you know. Well, come on, I mean, are you, let's be serious. Uh, I mean, you say you're doing, thing, he's doing things that you don't know about. I mean, is that true? Is, he, is, you, is your right hand actually reacting and half of your brain reacting without the other half of your yes, mind knowing? Yes, I mean, right, right now I'm thinking of you, what, what you're saying, and what I'm going to say in reply, you know. But at the same time, Sonny's having a look round, and if he, if, you know, if somebody sneezes over there, he'll, he'll, he'll sneeze before you do. No, but you're working. I mean, no, come on, now you are working. You, are, you, are you two separate people? Are you divorced? Uh, is one side even divorced from the other side? It's something you develop, Richard. It's like learning to play the piano. You, you develop your mind this way, to be always, always uh, purposely letting Sooty uh, go a different way to you, you know, and uh, thinking separately, straight down the middle. I mean, what do you, do you regard Sooty as, 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 a, as a person, as a son almost, as part well, of the family? Very much so, oh yes, yes, he's part of the family now. In fact, uh, my wife and I went on a cruise a few years ago and we had to debate whether to take Sooty with us on this cruise. And we said, no, this is going to be a pure holiday and we'll leave him at home. <laughs> <laughs> but at the last minute we had to change our minds and say we can't leave the poor little so-and-so at home because he after all he's paying for it you know <laughs> so that's right isn't it so we took him with us at the last minute in a little case and we got down to the hotel was staying in london i changed my mind again i left it with the, the head porter i said look after that for a fortnight i will pick it up on the way back with sooty in this little case and we woke up both of us in the middle of the night three o'clock in the morning worrying about poor little sooty in the porter's lodge so the next morning we went down got it out again and we took him with us on holiday didn't we we had a whale of a time didn't we yeah, but he, of course he was working. What do you want to... <laughs> You've got a present for him? <laughs> oh, he's been trying all this time to say he's got a present from Rich for Richard. Yeah. Well, I I'll go... Oh. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.